today's episode, we'll be exploring the main question, how to get started with living a healthy and fit lifestyle, how and where to start, and how to get and stay motivated. These are key issues for a lot of folks around the world who are either having trouble simply getting started or staying on the healthy lifestyle path once they do get started. We'll also take a look at the current situation with health around the world, and you'll hear both our opinions today on the future of all things health and wellness. Today is a fun and lively discussion into all things related to health and wellness, motivation, and starting out on your journey. My guest for this episode is Anthony Amen, founder of the Redefined Fitness brand and host of the weekly podcast, Health and Fitness Redefined. Anthony overcame a serious injury in 2010 and discovered fitness was the key to saving his life. He now dedicates his life to using fitness as medicine to support others in their own transformation journey. He can be found on Instagram at Anthony Amen Fitness and his website www.redefine-fitness.com. All right. Welcome, everybody. So good to be with you here again today. Coach Brad, as always, the Be Well, Be Safe, Be Happy, Eat Ice Cream podcast. And I'm super stoked because now we're switching roles. I got Anthony with us from New York again today. How you doing, Anthony? Doing awesome, Brad. Thanks for having me on. I just got to point out I can't eat ice cream. So, Oh, um, have you got an allergy to it or lactose? Uh, lactose really badly. <laughs> oh, that's a, that, that's a bummer. You know, the whole eat ice cream thing is, is it's kind of a metaphor for life, you know, when, uh, when we get stressed out and things like that, but when you're eating ice cream, you know, you're, you're in the moment, you're enjoying it, you're having fun, you're having, you're smiling and you kind of forget about all the worries of the world for even just a moment. And, you know, so I kind of say it's a metaphor for life. That's kind of what life I think should be about. So I, I agree. Mine would be just eat baklava and have a beer. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Yeah. So anyway, you had me on your show before Anthony and you asked me a lot of good stuff and I wanted to dive in with you today about all things health and fitness and wanted to start with your your story i know you mentioned in your bio you had an injury uh, several years back and that it was health and fitness that kind of saved you and so kind of kind of take us into that a little bit if you wouldn't mind yeah sure good backstory yeah i, I was the most unathletic skinny person <laughs> you've ever met in your life growing up i don't know i'm a close second there then maybe <laughs> Did a 15, 30 minute mile in 11th grade. For all of you that run, you know how good that is. <laughs> Basically, just out of breath at the end, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I always loved kind of just playing intramural sports, even though I was really bad at them, and did that for fun. So that took me into college when when I was 20 years old. I was going to, I was in Oswego. We played a sport called broomball, which oh, yeah. for those that don't live up north, it's basically poor man's hockey. So okay. Instead of skates, you're on sneakers on ice, mm. and the ball, it's a ball instead of a puck. But then it's all the same rules. Okay. Oh. You, a lot you, of fun. You play it on roller skates or? No, no, sneakers. Oh, sneakers. Okay. You get really good at running on the ice. Like, I got pretty good. Stopping short, running quickly after a few years of playing. It wasn't my first game. It was a year and a half into it. But the night before, uh, one of my friends – rolled his ankle and this is relevant to the story so then going into that broom ball game he was on the opposing team uh-huh. and he went to go slide tackle me. and normally when you go into a slide tackle you more get low brace for the hit and just kind of take it mm-hmm. i was like oh i don't want to hurt his ankle because he twisted it so i went to go step around him mm-hmm. and as i went to go get around him he went underneath me my back heel hit up and i flew backwards and Crashed my head against the ice. I was wearing a helmet. If I wasn't the doctor said I would have been dead. But that's how it started. And so you had a, a head injury or what kind of injury? It was a con- major concussion with herniations at my all cervical spine. I wow. remember that night. I actually went back in and finished the game off. Told I probably shouldn't have done that. But <laughs> that night was when I kind of lost my speech. And then I don't remember from that happened in February. I don't remember anything until May. But I was told I couldn't look at light. I was on Percocets, Flexerol, 500 megs of ibuprofen, lots of drugs. Ended up having no range of motion in my neck. I had frozen shoulder on my right side. Oh, wow. So I, if this is visual, like really quickly. So like, mm-hmm. 
and then my shoulder was like oh. trying to barely get it past 90 degrees and then I, I suffered from weekly tension migraines so my trapezius muscle would get super tight and go right into my neck and once that triggered I just couldn't look at light anymore and said take my medicine and go to bed regardless of the time of day it was so that's where I was left uh, when I started getting figuring out answers to try to make myself feel better because now we're like five six months in I started going to a bunch of doctors physical therapists you name it I went there and at my 25th doctor, he sat me in his office and no joke, he looks at my chart. He goes, uh, I'm a physician, not a magician. I can't help you. Please leave. Those were his exact words. Yeah. Wow. So, What, what kind of doctor was this? A sports orthopedic surgeon. No uh, way. The Those biggest are... hospitals on Long Island. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the right kind of doctor to go to, a specialist. So, wow. So what, what happened next then? I was already starting to get into fitness a little bit. I was going to the gym because I was laid in bed for four months. <laughs> so I couldn't, I couldn't get out of my room. So I just started experimenting with the gym. And I was noticing like certain things I did, I felt better. Certain things I did made it way worse. So I was like, you know, I think there's something to this. Maybe we can force myself into you know, my traps tight, maybe we can bring my shoulders down and back more, maybe we can alleviate the pressure out of that muscle. So through complete and utter trial and error, and I mean lots and lots of error, because I did not study, I just tried it all on myself. I started feeling better and being able to gain more of a functioning life to the, to the point when I was a senior, I actually switched my major from whatever I was doing in pre-med at that time, all the way over to health psychology. Oh, okay. And I st became, I took a personal training course. I became a personal trainer. And from there, I just started working at gyms and really got back range of motion, got back things that I was told I was never be able to do. I was told you never be able to lift weight off your head. Well, look at you, I can do this. It took two years to touch my hands above my head. And that was like one of the happiest days of my life. So just little things like that really showed me that exercise can be the answer that people are looking for. And I took that philosophy with me and then went into studying all about fitness and becoming really just understanding how the human body works and then applying my own methods to it. And it's I've seen crazy results with my clients through things like this that for those people that had similar situations and those are the ones I help out the most. So is it fair to say, uh, Anthony, exercise saved your life? Yes. Yeah. And turned your life around, too, in a, in a completely different direction that you were not expecting or anything either. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of why I need my company, Redefine Fitness, because I wanted to figure out a way oh. to change why, what fitness is. And people always took fitness as the guys bulking up in the corner, screaming at each other, trying to lift more weight. Where to me, fitness more was medicine. To me, it was a different definition and something that people needed to approach differently into to get results as just day-to-day -day living as opposed to, hey, I want to look good. And then uh, I took that, huge. came up with redefined fitness and then took her slogan as fitness is medicine. I, you know, actually, that that's huge. I didn't know that last time we talked that that's your slogan, fitness is medicine. That is huge. I never thought of it that way. Even for me as a, as a fitness, not guru, but uh, that is that is huge. Fitness is medicine. Is that kind of how you you counsel and coach your new clients when they come in that you get them? Yeah. That the, hey, this is not a workout. This is medicine for you. Exactly. And of course, it depends on the client. I mean, we have yeah. we get clients that just want to lose weight. We get clients that just come just to do something in the day. And then we get the extremes of those that really need the hand holding and helping out, trying to figure out how to change their lives. I have some really cool stories if you would like me to share, but there is, I've seen fitness do things that people thought was impossible. Yeah, sure. Yeah, share one of them. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll share the biggest one because I think it has the most impact. Uh, I have a client who's in his 40s mm -hmm. and he had three lobotectomies, meaning he had three surgeries for pinched nerves from his cervical, his thoracic, and his lumbar spine. So upper, middle, and lower part of the spine. And the first one he did was his cervical, it went well. And then he did his thoracic, it went well. And then he did his lumbar. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where you play with your spine too much. 
You get burned? A lot. Of, yeah. yeah. They severed many nerves in his back. Wow. And he was left to the point uh, he couldn't even sit upright. He lost feeling to his right oblique. He lost feeling to his hip flexor. He couldn't dorsiflex on one side. And he was helpless. He was going to physical therapy. It wasn't doing anything. And he came to me on a motorized scooter and he said, can you help me? I said, I'm going to help you. I was like, you sure? I was like, absolutely. I promise you what you're going to do is totally unconventional, but I'm going to push you and I'm going to help you. He said, okay. So <laughs> we started going along. Um, this We're three and a half years in. Obviously, we had a year break because of what happened in 2020. Okay. Yeah. But I'll never forget right before we got shut down, I got him standing, like standing on his own. And he broke down crying. And he just was like, this is unbelievable. He's like, every doctor told me you would never be able to walk again. And you had me standing. And now he got back into the training with me again. And today, actually, we went for the longest walk he's ever done. It was a tenth of a mile, straight. And we, he had a, a stick, and he was holding my hand, but he was moving his legs. And he made it the entire way. And he was thrilled. He's like, I can't believe I'm doing this now, when I was told by every doctor I went to that mm, I would never be able to do this again in my life. And it's just the little things that you learn and we take for granted that you really, when you, someone actually gets back to that, it's, it's amazing to see. And I think that's the power, and I love your slogan, that's the power of fitness as medicine. Uh, let me ask you this, Anthony, you obviously work with a lot of clients and there's still a lot of people who, who are not you know, doing exercise or fitness because they're scared or they think it's hard or, you know, they don't enjoy it or they don't like it. How, how do both you and I, I guess, as, as coaches and trainers, how do we approach these people and say, Hey, fitness is medicine. Life's harder without doing it. I, I no th- one, life is harder if you don't exercise. Yeah. Uh, bottom line. I mean, yeah. if you don't do anything, you don't increase. I don't even mean going to a gym. And I don't like that example where people are like, I have, exercises at a gym no exercise could be done any point of the day and it could be as little as just walking that's still exercise you're still moving creating motion in your body so teaching yourself that and get keeping yourself going especially as you get older things get a lot harder yeah. so maybe you can't stop walking to the mailbox to get your mail think about that isn't it more embarrassing to ask someone to go get mail for you or your grandkids you want to play with them isn't it more embarrassing to not be able to pick up the grandkids and run around with them isn't it worse to end up with type 2 diabetes and start getting neuropathy where you can't feel your legs anymore and then you get an infection and then you get lose a leg? Isn't that worse? So what what's harder to deal with? Yeah. Choose your heart, as they say. Yeah, no, I, I I totally get what you're saying. And and it blows me away. And actually, this is kind of something else I want to get in, into you with, you know, uh, you'd have to be living under a rock really to not know the word exercise or healthy eating or whole foods or organic or, or something like that. But yet so many people are, are not paying any attention to that. And, you know, you're right. It is what, what is harder going to the mailbox or, you know, having your grandkids do it or, or exercising, but so many people are not, they're still not listening, I guess. You it's can't, crazy. you can't force somebody to Yeah, you lead a horse to water. You can't force it to drink. Yeah. It's a great expression. Cause it's true. Yeah. It, it, it's just so crazy. I, I remember I was going through some of my Facebook posts the other day and I posted one a couple of years ago. I was in the, the health and fitness section of the bookstore, like 500 books or, you know, just so much information out there, but it seems like our obesity rates are increasing. Diabetes is increasing. Insulin resistance is increasing. Um, heart, heart ischemia and all this stuff is actually getting worse it's crazy i can tell you why i mean yeah it's not it's not the full answer but it's part of the answer people use traditional medicine as a backfall what i mean by that it's yeah. fail they know they can do xyz not worry about it because you know i'll end up in the hospital and the doctors will fix me I can't tell you how many people like now look, look at conversations you have people that are insulin. They're just, oh, how many doses are you taking? Like, it's no big deal. Like, it's no big deal that type of diabetes. But it's like, it is a big deal. You're just now introducing 
more pills to your body, which give you more side effects and get more issues um, because they take the hospitals for granted as a fail safe. And that's 90% of the reason why the hospitals are overcrowded. They're overcrowded because of preventable diseases that we could have stopped going to the hospital in the first place and kept the room open for those that have had trauma happen to them, someone falling out of a tree or whatever. It's an extreme example. But or, or get their get their ankles swept sweeped out from under them and fall back on their head. <laughs> yes. Regardless, that's why hospitals are overcrowded. That's why doctors and nurses are overworked. I mean, it's because people use hospitals as a failsafe and everything. They don't care. They treat themselves as a hospital. There's a the nurse that's going to help them. You know, it, it's just crazy. I, I don't understand a lot of the, that psychology, but, you know, personal trainers, health coaches, we charge, uh, you know, it, it varies depending on your level of experience and where you are, but, you know, 50 to 150, maybe 200 an hour, that doesn't come close to a traditional doctor. You know, they start at 200 an hour, you know, 200 to as much as 500. That's out of pocket, you know, before insurance even kicks in. It's $5,000 a night. That's a standard. That's without a doctor walking into your door at a hospital. $5,000 starting a night. That for 5,000, you could hire me for, gosh, close to a year, I think. And uh, you, you'd get a lot more, you'd get a lot more bang for your buck. That's for sure. Yeah. And I, I love where medicine's going and it's getting a little better, but you're still going to have people that just rely on them to have all the answers. And they don't. And the bottom line is they don't know everything. I mean, my whole family's doctor. Don't look at me wrong, yeah. but they. I've seen the textbook on health and fitness. It's maybe like ten pages compared to the three thousand pages that they memorize to go into their residencies or take their MCATs. Yeah. So it's like that's how little they pay attention to it because they have so many other things to learn, and it's so much. It's hard. It's a lot of a lot of stuff to learn. So they don't have all that backing for the preventative medicine side of it when it comes to diet and exercise, but that's where we come in. That's how people need us. We are a sector of fitness. We are that prevent, uh, sorry, of medicine. Fitness is that preventative medicine side. Yeah, I've been saying for a couple of years, every doctor's office in this country and this planet needs needs me in their office, needs you in their office, somebody like that to work collaboratively in, in some aspect or another. Uh, Anthony, let me ask you this. There's a lot of people listening to this, you know, they're they're they don't know how to get started, they're scared to get started, you know, with exercise. What what would you say to that person? Start. Start, yeah. Just start. And don't like I said 10 minutes ago, it's not about joining a gym. I don't care if you join the gym. I don't care if you hire a personal trainer. Yeah. But how about walk to the mailbox and walk back? Yeah. Do that. Do it every day. And I know that becomes easy. Walk uh, across the street and walk back. And then every week, just add a little bit. Maybe you're drinking 10 sodas a week. Don't cut out soda completely. So they're drinking 10, drink nine. Start there. It's something. And never say, I'm going to wait till Monday. Because it will never happen. Other priorities come in. Other things come into your life. It's You start now. I'm going to start right now. Set yourself a game plan. Make it achievable. And don't dive headfirst into something. Because that is not something you can create a habit around. Just cutting things cold turkey. Jumping into things headfirst. And going from all to none. It's not sustainable. You're not going to be going to burn out. Because it's not how you live your life. Mm -hmm. Do the smallest changes. And things will stack over time. For example, back to the soda. You drink one less a week. That's 52 sodas a year less you're drinking. Where the average soda has any, let's say, 200 calories in it. Now you're having 50 a grams thousand of sugar. and 50 grams of sugar. Yeah. So 50 times 52. I'm not doing that math right now. But that's how <laughs> much less sugar you're having in a year. That's a lot. By just getting rid of one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you you just hit on a key word. Like, I love doing these podcasts, and especially with, you know, fitness experts like you, because I learned so much. But you you just said the magic word, start. That's it. Make a decision and start. That's it right there. And take that first step. And from there, just just build on it week after week after week. That That's powerful. That's huge. That could be the whole podcast right there. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> there you go. Uh, let me ask you this. So... 
Fitness and health and wellness is changing day by day with technology, um, people's habits. You know, one of the big concerns, you know, 20 years ago was, oh, I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to exercise. Well, people have even less time now. Where, where do you see the future of, of all this? I, funny enough, I'm on Sunday. I'm going to record my episode for Monday. Okay. And I'm going to talk about speculations about what I think that this is going to be in 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, there's but a little warm up. Yeah, here's a little warm up. I have some crazy theories and things I want to test and see what happened and how things are going to progress. But that's a side story. Basically, where, where it's going to end up, I don't think it's going to be. I think we're going to get still get way worse. I don't think we've hit the point yet. Everyone needs to kind of wake up. And that starts with our society as a whole realizing, hey, we need to do something better. I thought that was going to happen during 2020. And it definitely increased now how many people are realizing it. But it didn't help that we were always slandered how gyms are the worst place to go during what was going on. But it turned out that if you were healthier, and obesity was the number one reason people were dying from COVID. And if maybe if we cured the obesity, we would have saved 72% of the people that died from it. Therefore, would it have been a pandemic? Probably not. So that's, that's that was the no. minor wake-up call we had. And I think we're going to have another one. I think there's going to be something else in 10, 20 years. Something just as extreme that's going to come. It's going to affect our population like crazy. Some kind of disease. And that will be the, hopefully, that everyone comes out and says, the, the, the reason this is happening is because we're not taking care of ourselves. We're, we're, giving our, we're letting our bodies fail before they even start fighting whatever disease this is. So let's fix the underlying condition before we really get into what it, why, like any anything that can help with this disease in general. Let's start backwards and let's keep our society healthier as a whole so we don't overcrowd our hospitals and we don't have issues like that going forward. What, what do you see? You, you just said fix the underlying condition. What, what do you see as the underlying condition? The obesity? Obesity. And it's Well, we, we go to the grocery store and 80% of what's there is not something we should be eating. Yeah. I, like yeah, 80%. Yeah, that's, that's a huge number. Yeah. But see, that's, that, that's ironic because what drives the world is economy and what drives the economy is a product and what drives the product is the consumer that you sell. And so they're just giving this product that people are buying and that creates jobs and it's, it's such a catch-22. But that I'm, not, so, are... I'm not implying that anyone needs to come out and say, hey, let's take this off the shelf. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe uh, supply and demand are the market. So it's people need to start demanding healthier stuff. People need to start going out and buying stuff. Something really cool. I've actually can now go to the grocery store and buy ground bison. It's rare. I find it, but I do find it now. And like, stop and shop and stuff. It's a way healthier option than beef. Yeah. It's also for those that really care about the environment, way healthier for the environment. Cows are the one, the number one reason that we have such methane issues in our gas because when they poop, there's so much methane gas, it causes the destruction of the ozone layer. A lot of people don't, don't know that, but Wow. Let's switch to a healthier meat that's higher in unsaturated fats. That's not filled with trans fat like beef is. And it still tastes delicious. So we can have that now more often. And people start buying it, buying it, buying it. There's going to be more of a demand for it. Therefore, there'll be more bison farms, there'll be more bison available. And we'll start eating healthier that way. That's how it's going to have to happen. And it, when it happens, I think it's slow, but... I don't think we were fully. I, I might have that. even less hair than I do now. Um, who knows? But uh, <laughs> when that does happen, you know, <laughs> yeah, at my health food store that I go to here in, in my community, I can get uh, wild elk every once in a while and then wild deer every once in a while. They'll have those. In That's store. awesome. I try to get that at all. Really stock up on this and this kind of off topic real quick, but I'm just curious. I'm as I, I'm always learning too. Um, organ meats, liver, kidney, heart, uh, even brain, bone marrow. I've heard these are super packed with nutrients and all kinds of stuff. Have you ever heard that? Or even... I don't know much about organ meats, I'll be honest. Yeah. Plus, it's a lot harder to sell to the public. It, it it's is. a lot easier to get someone to yeah. sell bison, ground bison than it is to say, yeah. hey, can you eat this brain? <laughs>
Yeah, it is. I, I just, yeah, again, doing these podcasts, that was a, a topic that came up on another one. And that's something I had been thinking about. Oh, yeah, the organ meets. But what he really made point was, you know, this idea of gut health and all this. And, you know, a lot of that new, new micronutrients are found in, in the organ meats, which which we don't typically consume. Which even simpler, if you need the gut health. I totally believe in having good pre and probiotics. Yeah. We're all fruits and veggies. Easy. You know, it, it's it's it is easy actually, you know, and I, I'm still confused, you know, I, again, you, and I don't want to insult people's intelligence, but you'd have to be living under a rock to not know that like this broccoli or this, this apple or, or this, you know, wild organic, you know, buffalo or whatever is healthier than this bag of chips or than this soda or, you know, these crackers or this, you know, sugary, you know, cake or, or whatever. But most people are still choosing the sugary cake and, and everything. And like, how do you, how do you not know the difference? And then, yeah, like, why are we still not me or you personally, but a lot of folks still, still doing that and still abusing their, their bodies and everything. It's just crazy for me. There, it's a multitude answer. It's yeah. One, they don't know. We're not taught. We're not taught this in school. And I did a two hour episode on this about childhood obesity. And it's something that's really worth checking out about what's going actually going on in our school systems when it comes to our kids' health. Yeah. And then the other side of it, it's convenience. So I can go buy a nice cake for yeah. $3 and it's quick, easy to calories. It tastes amazing. Or I got to go buy a bunch of fruits and veggies that are going to cost me more money because they're marked up because they say organic on it. And then I have to go home and cook it. Yeah, that word you said, well, there's another magic word. You just said the word convenient. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny, you know, you either you pay more for the healthy food now or you pay more for the doctor later. So it's like you, you talked earlier, you know, choose your heart. Well, choose your choose your pay, your payment option there. You know, which one? But it's a lot easier to defer payments than it is to pay it's, them off and pay your debt sooner. It's a deferred payment. You're exactly right. Uh, you just mentioned childhood obesity uh, uh, a moment ago. Do you do you work with kids at all, or do you? Oh yeah. Do you, do you see a lot of that in your gym? Yeah. Yeah. And how, if, how? What are the age ranges of the kid? Like kids, like twelve and under, or I work with eight year olds, nine year olds, all the way up to I work from eight to eighty five. That's my yeah. range. <laughs> okay. So you've got so like seen eight, it all. eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds that are, you know, that fall under that childhood obesity category. Yeah. Wow. Sad. But they're there that could help. So the ones I see are actually want to see a difference, want to feel better, want to be able to keep up with their friends. And they're amazing kids. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are great kids to have around and have. We have a lot of fun. I try to keep a little more fun and engaging we play games depending on their age you know that's what it comes down to is keeping fitness fun and they just lose it in schools a lot of schools have pe every other day for a half an hour and realistically by the time you get changed go out the teacher doesn't even care if you get changed anymore because they know the mom's going to call and say why didn't my kid fail pe well they didn't get changed they say, we'll change the grade for you that's what's going on so people aren't caring and then you, uh, you're you getting rid of the only physical activity out of the day because you're sitting around all day besides that. And then you're going into the cafeteria and you're expecting the food to serve, the school to serve good food, but they're not because they're mandated against the company that's supplying the food to the schools that it's all disgusting, but they can't do anything about it because they have to go buy from this group and that's the food they're getting. And now they're serving that to your kids so they're getting low quality foods from school and they're not getting enough exercise. They're sitting around all day. I, I mean, it's easy to see the writing on the wall. Yeah. Well, let me let me let, let's let's switch to the optimistic side here for a second. Not the not that we haven't been doing that, but what what do we as a planet need to do to move forward to to be healthy to be what I call fit, happy, and healthy? We need to start. Star. <laughs> yeah. And I know that's like such a, not, not the answer you're looking for, but it's, but it, but it is, and, it is the answer. Yeah. Or even better, take responsibility for yourself. Stop <sighs> putting blame on other people. There's another one. Yeah. Stop blaming this person, that person. Uh, my kid wanted McDonald's, so I had to get it. I hear that every day. 
It's yeah. like, you, know, you could have got something else and maybe gave your kids something better, even if they wanted. I can't tell you times my parents told me no on fast food. No, no, <laughs> we're not getting that. Yeah. Nope, you don't get that. How about you go play outside for two hours before we give you ice cream? Okay. Like, yeah. that was that's what we did. And it kept us active again. I was doing construction with my dad when I was 13 years old. He's like, you're not watching cartoons, come to the job with me. And it was a good bonding experience. Something I always remember for the rest of my life is being out with my dad on a job site on a hot Saturday and Sunday. But it was kept me active. Well, that's ex- that's fitness. You know, I'm thinking as as you're talking, I'm thinking in my brain too. I used to live in Asia for for many years, Thailand and Cambodia, Japan, the Philippines, all that. They they really don't, at least when I was there in, in the mid nine mid mid to late 1990s. You know, childhood obesity, obesity in general was not really a problem. They they and so much of our society here in America today is being tied to technology and culture and indoors and the TV and you know the electronic babysitters now. Uh, but kids over there still have are still in touch with nature. They're outside playing. They're moving, um, and they still eat a traditional diet, you know, of of meat, fruit, and vegetables. Uh, some uh, rice and Asian culture too. Uh, a lot of what's a lot of what I see with our health and fitness is is really being controlled by technology now and by the processed food industry. It's just, not wrong. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Anthony. We got a lot of work to do, I guess. It's all right. But the people that are asking for help are getting it and they're yeah. feeling better. And it's a great thing to see. Permanent, it's, it's amazing. Permanent, permanent job security, right? <laughs> I, I didn't get into this deal to make money. And yeah. I always tell people that if I wanted to make money, I would have done seriously anything else. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be working the hours I work. I wouldn't be doing what I do now and wearing myself down. I do it because I want to help people. Cause at the end of the day, if I can get someone, I did this because of you, I lived a better life because of you. That's my payment. And that's what I work for. And that's what I do what I do because you can really ch- help change people's life. And I can do that through fitness and actually make an impact on this world. That's awesome. Man. You got like, I got, wow. I got goosebumps and tears. Uh, Anthony, this has been awesome. I, I love you as a human and just love having you on the show. And and we're going to meet up in New York one of these days when I get up there. But uh, any anything else that you'd like to say for the good of the order before we sign off here? All things health and fitness? Just start. Yeah. That's I, I so simple, so easy. And don't go for gold right away. Really, really understand that there's no... There's no answer. There's no diet. There's no program. It's just start. Yeah. Start, create movement into your life. Don't completely throw and change your diet at the wall because your friend lost 20 pounds doing something. It's just another yo-yo diet. I don't care what name's on it. Just eat right. You know what foods are good for you. Start now and congratulate yourself when you achieve these small victories. And something as easy, like I said, walk to the mailbox and back. Give yourself a gold star for that. That's awesome. The fact that you did that today, you started, that's amazing. Keep doing it, and you'll see a world of improvement in front of you. And I would just add on to that. What you saw in your life and what I saw in my life is that that healthier version of you is inevitable. It, it is there. It's like literally there waiting for you. So if you're listening to this now and, you know, wherever you are in your journey, that that change from, you know, who you are to who you want to be in terms of your health and fitness, that is there. Anthony, you went through that with your, your rehab that you did a lot of it. Most of it sounds like on your own, what I went through with my journey you just got to, like you said, start keep taking that one step at a time. And uh, it's inevitable that you will eventually get to, to where you want to go in terms of your health and fitness. So, uh, Anthony, I wish I had more time, but uh, out, of, out of time today. I'm going to have you back on the show because this is awesome. I want to go all bunch of different places. So, we'll, we'll all right, we'll do it. We'll coordinate again. We'll get you back on the podcast here, here later on. But uh, if you've been listening to this, super, super appreciated. If you like what you heard, uh, please share this episode. And Anthony, tell us, I know you've got a podcast and, and the website. Tell us about that real quick. I have a similar podcast. It's Health and Fitness Redefined. That's Health and Fitness Redefined, streaming on every audio and video platform. We're about 150 episodes deep. Really, really cool stuff. And 
Brad was on my show, so I definitely recommend going <laughs> to check out that episode. Not I was whatsoever, but <laughs> definitely check that out, guys. Check our website out for our gym, www.redefined-fitness.com. That's www.redefined-fitness.com. We got in-person and virtual options. Hope to see you there. I didn't know you had in virtual or virtual options. That's good. So yeah, I will put those in the show notes. So again, wherever you listen to podcasts, obviously you're listening to this podcast. Leave me a five star review. Leave Anthony a five star review. Redefine uh, Fitness is his podcast. Is that the health name? and fitness redefined? Uh, and I should have kept redefined. it the same. Okay. I, I, I hold that in my head. I was like, darn it, they both should have had the same name. <laughs> it's confusing. Uh, leave, leave him a five-star review uh, also wherever you are and share my podcast, share his podcast, uh, do us that solid. And uh, sure appreciate you being here. And as always, like I say at the end of every episode, and I know you can't eat ice cream, Anthony, but be well, be safe, be happy, eat ice cream. Take care, everyone. Thanks. We'll see you next time.